Hey everybody, it's Angel from Halo Inspirations. We give you inspirations to help you spread beauty and joy through your quilting journey. Happy hump day to you. Happy Wednesday to you. Happy hump day, happy Wednesday. It is another project coming your way. Uh, I've had a couple of people ask me to do some bowl cozies and they're not my favorite. I'm gonna be real honest with you. However, I promised and we will deliver. So the three, what is a bowl cozy? Let's just start there. What is a bowl cozy? For some of you who may not know, this is a bowl cozy. This is my bowl. Okay. It's, I, I did measure the width across it and it does measure at six and a half inches going across, but it's just a little place. My daughter loves these guys. She loves her bowl cozies. I've made a number of them. I wasn't very good at it. <laughs> I've gotten better throughout the years. However, um, she loves them. And what do you do with these? Well, some people just like them for decorative purposes. Uh, that is pretty much, you know, um, it's just something cute. However, it does come on to the practical side. If I if I wanted to heat up a um, bowl of soup or some leftovers in this bowl, I could stick this in the microwave, hit two minutes or whatever, and um, when I pull it out, it, it's not gonna burn my hands, okay? Some people use them for ice cream. Um, personally, I don't eat enough ice cream to do it, and if I do, it's not gonna be in the bowl long enough for my hands to be cold. But a lot of, a lot of people love their little bowl cozies especially for the decorative side, okay? So that's what a bowl cozy is. Just makes this nice little bowl, super cute and decorative. You can use any fabric. Okay, almost. Let's talk about the things that you're gonna need. My size that I like to make that does this bowl is a 10 inch square, okay? These are the three things that you would guess we would need for a bowl cozy. You'll need fabric, batting, and thread. The most important thing about all of those ingredients is that it is a hundred percent, nothing else in it, but cotton. Okay. It's very, very, very important. Um, so when it comes to fabric, this is actually, it's, uh, I want to say, I don't have it with me. Lovely. Uh, Robert Kaufman, it's a, um, dots and stripes part of that collection uh i don't have any in my store right now our vendor is out at the moment you know how fabric is and in, in, in during this time period but if you can find it and you like polka dots these are super cute guys they're just absolutely darling so you'll need 10 inch squares of your fabric and when it comes to fabric like i said a hundred percent nothing else fabric, no silk, nothing. Okay. And it's so very important that there's no metallics. Okay. Cause you know, sometimes we have prints and they'll have metallic inside the print. Robert Kaufman makes, um, oh, what's it called? Uh, holiday story. Um, super love their Christmas fabric, but it's got those metallics. So if it has metallic, you can't use it as a microwavable bowl cozy. It will set on fire, you know, put sparks in your <laughs> microwave. You'll have a party in your microwave, but you won't be happy about it by the end of it. <laughs> what is it? As Angela Walter says, you'll be peeing your pants. So, um, you do want to make sure that there's no metallic, no nothing else included. It's just 100% cotton. The same thing goes for your batting. You want a 10 inch square. You want two 10 inch squares of your batting and two 10 inch squares of your fabric. Okay, you'll need two of them for each. Now, as far as batting goes, uh, Pellon does make a batting called Wrap and Zap. I actually um, have a package and I'll throw a picture up here, wherever. <laughs> I think it's over here. I don't know, it could be over here. But, um, we have wrap and zap, and this is 100% natural cotton batting. It typically runs $10 for 
45 inches by one yard. Okay, so it's 45 one way and 36 inches the next for ten, normally $10. Of course, it's on, I think it's on sale right now if you're watching this. Uh, we're in the middle of August of 2021. <laughs> so <clears throat> it is on sale currently. So you want to pick some up. That is fantabulous. On the back side of it is actually a um, pattern for a potato sack. I've never made one, but there is a pattern for you on the back of that wrap. Now that's $10 for 36 by 45 or 45 by 36, however you want to look at it. Okay. I am, and this is what it looks like. It's actually a cream color um, or a natural color. I am going to attempt also to use Quilter's Dream. Now that's 100% cotton, no bindings, no scrim, no glue, nothing else but cotton. You have to be sure that your batting doesn't have scrim. A lot of times the scrim is made of a very fine polyester. So it doesn't matter what company you use or what batting you use as long as it's only cotton. So important that it is straight cotton. And Quilter's Dream makes high quality, 100% cotton batting. Now this is the request. I'm experimenting with it because it's not very thick. It's their thinnest loft. It's three ounces worth. So it is their thinnest loft. So I'm going to make this um, multicolored white with this batting and I'm gonna throw it in the microwave. And at the end of the video, I'll tell you whether or not it actually helps um, Re, you know, when you grab the bowl, if it's hot, if your hands don't feel it. So that's my experiment. Why? Number one, it's high quality and it's not as expensive. So I will tell you, I only have a throw size, um, throw size and double on my website with request, but a throw size with tax in the white, not natural, but in the white is running 13 something. I think 1334 is what it is. That includes tax. So that's a 60 by 60. So you're getting more bang for your buck um, with the request. And I'm always looking for ways to save y'all money. So if this works, I'll let you know at the end of the, at the, end of the uh, video. I will have made it and I will have experimented with it okay the other part is cotton I mean <laughs> it's thread the thread needs to be 100% cotton now it's very important that you pay attention I am using orophil thread I have a 50 weight for this for this one for this bowl cozy I'm using black because it won't show as much right and for this one I'm using white, but it's 100% cotton thread. When you go to certain places and you buy thread, sometimes they have a poly core and then they're, they're, the outside is made of cotton. It has to be 100% cotton so it doesn't melt and it doesn't destroy, doesn't set on fire, doesn't destroy your microwave. It's so important. Those three ingredients are so very, very important. So you'll need two 10 inch squares of fabric, okay? And I pre-cut it because I, I don't have electricity in this room. Uh, I have extension cords and I can't get my cutting table. So I've pre-cut my fabric. So you need two 10 inch squares of fabric, two 10 inch squares of batting, both 100%, and you'll need 100% cotton, plain and simple thread. Okay, whatever thread you use, just make sure it's 100%. I've heard so many horror stories, and that is why, because what you're using may not be 100% cotton, okay? Some of the other things that you're gonna need, or that, uh, well, you'll need a ruler or some kind of measuring tool. You could do it with a tape measure, uh, but just something where you can measure uh, and you'll see why later in the video. So I'm gonna, it doesn't need to be very big, uh, you could go as small as a three and a half or a three inch ruler. Um, I'm using this because it's easy. It's a six and a half by Creative Grids. You'll need, um, I used painter's tape 
you'll see why. Uh, you don't necessarily need this, but it's helpful to get some of the quilting done. Uh, you'll need a marking tool uh, in the video just so that you could see it better. I did use a Sharpie. I'm, it was a black bowl cozy, so you wouldn't see it on the inside, okay? Um, you'll see as we go along, but for the white one, I'm going to use my air soluble, water soluble disappearing ink pen. So, um, you'll need some kind of a marking tool at some point. Scissors. Once your squares are cut, cause I did cut mine with the self healing mat and the rotary, uh, cutter and a ruler. But after that, I just use scissors. So plain old scissors, uh, you might need, I use wonder clips, uh, to hold my things together later. You could also use pins or maybe you're comfortable and you don't need it at all. The other thing that you will need is something to help you turn, whether, um, for your points, I do have the purple thing. This you can find in our, um, on our shop along with the rulers and everything else. Mine is, I don't have painter's tape, okay? <laughs> and I don't have scissors yet. What? Um, but the purple thing is what I use to turn the corners out. I used a hemostat. You don't need this either. It's just comfortable because when you go to turn it inside out, I just simply grab it and pull it through. This isn't necessary, guys. What is necessary? The fabric, the batting, the thread, all 100% cotton, and something to measure and something to mark. Those are the things that you're absolutely going to need. And like I said, your marking tool, it can be chalk, it can be the disappearing ink pen. If you're using black fabric, go ahead and use a Sharpie. Um, you'll see how we use that later. The painter's tape is, is not a necessary, but it sure does make life easy. So those are, I think, all the things that you're going to need uh, or want. Uh, I, you know, I'll be real with you. I do. I talk about being real and the honest truth. These are, I'm going to show you at the end, my, one of my first, it ain't pretty. <laughs> so it's kind of nice if you can experiment and I'll talk about that later also, because I haven't made one in a hot minute. So I did a little dry run for myself and it came out really well, but I can't throw it in the microwave because it's not all hundred percent cotton. So we'll talk about that later, but I'm going to show you through the video, how I made the black multicolored, um, bowl cozy. And then off camera, I'm going to experiment with this white and throw it in the microwave. And I'll tell you at the end how it works out and whether or not I can advocate using that real thin loft because it will make your life so much easier and it's just a little bit cheaper. So let's go ahead and get this started. Get your fabric cut, 10 inch squares, two pieces along with two pieces of batting. And let's go ahead and get a bowl cozy made. See you guys in just a sec. Okay, so like I said, you need for the size that we're doing, two 10 inch squares of your fabric. One will be the inside, one will be the outside. They are reversible, like I said. So I do have two 10 inch squares here and I also have two 10 inch squares of batting. Now this is the wrap and zap that we talked about. At the same time, I will be sure at the end, I'll let you know how it works, but I am using Quilter's Dream it is 100% cotton, no scrims, no bindings, no glues, nothing but straight cotton. It is the request, which is the lightest loft. And that's why I'm experimenting. And if you want to see, that is the difference in the loft, if you can see that. Let me pull this up just a little. Yeah, it is thicker. So that's why I'm kind of wondering about it. So I'm going to do this with you with the wrap and zap and in the meantime i'm also doing the request on the side and i'm doing that just so we can keep a difference i'm doing it in these colors i've got an orange and white and i've got a multicolor in white so that's how we're going to know the difference and the first thing after you've cut everything that you need 
you're just going to simply place your fabric on top of your batting. It will hold. They are pretty sticky. Um, and it's just one tenant square. If you feel like you need to pin, that is fine. But we are going to stitch an X on each of these, okay? So you'll have both of them put down on top of your batting, just like so. And you'll want to get it as straight as possible. I'll work with it before I stitch it. But you're going to sew corner to corner, okay? Just a simple X. Well, to make it, for those of you, you can eyeball it. Like I said before, you can eyeball it. However, if you're not comfortable eyeballing, you'll want to let you, some kind of marking tool. This is going to be the outside. So you don't want to mark with anything that's going to be shown and can't get off, okay? Because it is very important. Hence why I like to use the painter's tape. It's very important that you do, in fact, if you're going to feel like you have to mark it and you don't have painter's tape, just use something that you can get off because this will be the outside or the inside, however you want to look at it. So it will show. That's the point. And like I said, you're just going to simply stitch right along in an X fashion. So I'll get both of these ready and I'll see you at the sewing machine in just a sec. Okay, I won't bring you in every time I'm sewing. I just want you to know that it is a-okay to put the batting down while you are sewing. It won't hurt a thing, okay? And that way you can actually see me doing it and understand that it is very possible. I'm just looking for threads right now. Now, I want to also mention, I didn't talk about this. If you use painter's tape, make sure that you leave the um, corner where you're going to stitch. Because if you put it right on the corner, then you're not going to be able to stitch the corner, right? So I would place the tape right next to the corner. Okay, so you're just going to simply put it right underneath where you want to start. I would back stitch if you can remember. It's not the end of the world if you forget because some of us get in a, a, a bad habit of not back stitching. <laughs> I say that, but it's not necessary a lot of times. And it's not necessarily necessary here either because we're going to be stitching around it. It's just, I would encourage it. If you forget, it's not the end of the world. So I'm going to go ahead and do a couple of stitches and I'm going to go ahead and back stitch. And I'm going to simply use my painter's tape as a guide. And I see that it's scrunching up. There we go. Oh, if I can feel it. It wants to go where it wants to go. There we go. But this is all you're going to do. And as soon as you're done with one, I'm going to chain piece. And you will notice I do have the walking foot on. And I do that because we're going through layers. And it actually helps keep the drag on the bottom from the feed dogs and the feed dogs on the top. Everything's being pushed at an equal rate. Makes it a lot easier. And as we continue this project, uh, it's highly encouraged if you have one. It's not the end of the world if you don't, but we're going to be going through multiple layers. And so a walking foot will do a, a, a little better. Um, it's still, I don't have an industrial machine. I have a typical domestic machine. And um, when you get through some layers, sometimes you just gotta help your your fabric get through. But this is this one's really easy but you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Now I'm gonna chain piece and when this one is off my line, I will also notice this side is where the, on this side I have the tape. I'm gonna pull this up, get it out of the way. And on this one I have the tape on the other side. That way they don't connect because uh, that makes kind of a mess. <laughs> So, like I said, you don't have to use painter's tape. If you want to eyeball it, 
that is there's absolutely nothing wrong with that and I didn't back stick see like I said I'm I'm in the bad habit of not back stitching it's not the end of the world if you don't it truly is not not at this point And then that way, when I get done with this one, I'll be able to take the first one off and reposition the tape to go the other direction to sew the X. So I just wanted to pull you in. I wanted to show you that, in fact, you do put the batting down so that you can mark yourself. <clears throat> and this is it guys so we're gonna sew x's so i'll be i'm gonna get the x's done and i'll be back at you in just a second all right once you get your x's sewn on both sides so i have them on both of mine okay the next step is you're gonna want to you're gonna need a marking tool now my fabric is black so i'm not concerned about it showing through but on the white one i am going to use my disappearing water soluble air soluble pen to do the exact same thing. So you get your X's done, you can clean up your strings at this point or your threads if you'd like, but you're going to take it and you're going to fold it so that the batting is on the outside, okay? Batting on the outside, fold it in half. Now this is where I do things a little different. For a 10 and a 10 inch square, I use two and a quarter and one and a quarter. So I'm gonna place my ruler on top of my batting I'm gonna take my Sharpie or my marking tool and I'm gonna go over two and a quarter, okay? And I just put a little mark where two and a quarter is and then I go up one and a quarter and I put a little mark over here. Then I turn it just a little so I can write well. I am going to make a line to connect the dots. Okay, that's my first one. I'm gonna do it again on the other side. So I'm gonna lay my ruler up on top here. Let me go ahead and make that a tad bit better here. Okay, hopefully you can see that clear. So I put my ruler on top. I'm going to mark a line, a little dash at two and a quarter. Nope, that's not right, sorry. We're gonna go up one and a quarter and over two and a quarter. I'm just making simple little marks, little dashes, two and a quarter coming in, one and a quarter going up, and then you're just going to connect the dots. I am not right hand or left handed, so we just had left handers day. For those of you who are left handed, happy left handed day or belated left handed day. <laughs> So then I'm just going to take my ruler and I'm going to connect those two dots, or yes, connect the two dots, okay? And then I will go ahead before I sew, because what we're going to do is we're going to sew these lines. But before I do that, I fold it the other direction and I do the exact same thing, okay? Fold it in half again. You'll see your dart. That's fine. Put your ruler down. Okay, and we're going to mark in two and a quarter, up one and a quarter. Okay, go to the other side. We're going to mark up one and a quarter, that one wasn't quite one and a quarter, so I'm going to do it again, and I just have to remember that I have to Make sure it's that first one and I'm going to go down or over two and a quarter. Okay. And then I'll connect the dots. I'll do it on both sides. I didn't connect this one. Make sure it's right. Yep. Okay. And we'll just connect the dots. I'm going to take this to the sewing machine. I'm going to do this for both of them. 
I'm going to do it on the second one too. And I'm going to take it and I'm going to sew these two lines together and then turn it and sew on these two lines, just right on top of them. So I'm going to get that done on both of mine and I'll see you guys for the next step. So this is what you got. You're going to have two of them that have your darts. Okay, they're both going to look like that when you're finished. It looks kind of weird, but it, it, wor it works out. So I did backstitch, like I mentioned in the little, I put it a little words on the bottom. I did backstitch on each of these just to keep them more secure. But at this point, I don't use a rotary cutter. I use a pair of scissors and I eyeball about a quarter of an inch. Now feel free if you're not comfortable doing that, that you can most certainly put it down with your rotary cutter and your um, ruler and you can cut a quarter inch away but I just go around and I do all four this way on both of them okay boom one more just like so like I said I'm gonna do it for both of these Just simply cutting, uh, you know, like I said, try, don't try to go small, but what this is going to do is get rid of that bulk for you. It'll make it a little bit easier to sew. This is the easy part, guys. <laughs> the hard part's coming. <laughs> all right. So once you have them all cut, you're going to simply organize it like so, and you're going to turn this one so you're going to have this one so the batting is on the outside and you're going to make this one so that the batting is on the inside and at this point I do I do push out my darts a little bit okay there we go and then you're going to simply place them together and you want to line up those darts, okay? Get them all lined up, get everything positioned just how you like it. And I will be honest with you guys, because that's what this is all about. This next part is probably the hardest part out of the whole thing, because what we're going to do is we're going to get it all lined up and then we are going to stitch a quarter inch all the way around. Now, some people like to do a half an inch because they say that way they're not feeling like they're missing something or something gets, you know, it gets too skinny and, and it doesn't line up. Then they uh, tend to do a half an inch, but I think it takes away from the size. So I don't do that. But as you do notice, I get everything lined up and I clip it. You can pin it, you can clip it. You don't have to do this at all if you don't want to. I just, it, it to me it makes it easier. Okay, now when we sew a quarter inch around, what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave a gap. I will start here, so I'm gonna put a red clip. No, I won't start there, I'll end there, sorry. I'm gonna put a red clip to stop. And I'm going to start, oh, about here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start here, I'm gonna do a quarter inch all the way around, and I'm gonna stop here. That leaves me a gap to turn it out, okay? Because we're gonna have to turn this inside out. So I will start here, go a quarter inch all the way around, and I'll stop here before we turn it. Now, I want to let you know that when you get through, when you're doing these points, I still tend to fold them so that they nest and I know they're gonna nest. However, it still is extremely bulky right here. Do not feel bad if you have to help your machine get it through. Just try not to pull too hard or you might make your stitch really big. 
But if you don't have a, a, an, an industrial machine like I do, I mean, like, I, you know, I don't have an industrial machine. It's just a standard, inexpensive domestic machine. When I get to these bulks, because it's a lot of fabric and batting right there, I do have to help my machine. I'm going to attempt to sew um, with you. Hopefully it comes out. And I'll be able to keep it in there, but it's going to be really hard because the camera in your face and all that. We'll see. I'm going to try. But regardless, you're going to want to sew a quarter inch all the way around. Okay? So I will see you guys in just a sec. I tried to downgrade a little bit the light. I can't turn off my light to my machine. So I apologize if you have any kind of glare going on. And this is the best angle I could do. Uh, I just wanna show you how to get this started. And maybe we'll see how this works underneath this first gap. Now, when you start and you stop, you don't wanna be on a point and you don't wanna be on uh, a dart. So start before a dart and go beyond a point, okay? All right, so what we're gonna do, I'm gonna go, I went ahead and lowered my needle. This is set at a quarter inch, so I don't have to think about it. That's why you see this. I don't wanna have to think about a quarter inch. It's already a hot mess when you mess with this. And I hope my hands stay out of the way for the most part. I do apologize if they don't. Doing the best I can here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do a back stitch first, okay? And I probably should, I'm gonna go ahead and up my stitch length to two and a half, just because I have all this bulk, I think it'll make it a little easier. All right, it's all up to you what size stitching you have. Whenever you go to do this, you know, the idea is that we are nesting those seams so those points do meet. I still have my clip at my end. It's going to be fine. When I get through the seam right there, and you, you, there you go. I don't know if you could hear that, but my machine was struggling a little bit. All right. I'm going to make sure, I'm going to take my clip off here, and I'm going to make sure that everything is flat. I don't want any, any wrinkles or, or whatnot um, occurring as best as I can. And I'm just going to go ahead and stitch to the end, okay? Now, it's really kind of neat when you do an X. I try to stop on the stitch line of the X. It, I'm hoping it's about a quarter inch. I'm going to go ahead and leave my needle down. I'm going to lift it up and turn it. And it worked out pretty darn good. So I'm going to go ahead and lower my needle and continue to stitch some more. I'm going to pull this one out. I'm going to go ahead and do it because it's getting close. And I'm telling you, this is the hardest part, guys. This, this part right here. And it's no lie. There's a lot of people that make these all the time. And <laughs> it, it can be a struggle. Okay, it is what it is. This is the hardest part, guys. I promise you, this is the hardest part. So I'm gonna keep on stitching. I'm lifting my foot because I'm getting close to that um, seam of that dart and it wants to flip the other direction. I wanna try and keep everything as flat as possible. I'm gonna lift it again. There we go, that's much better. I'm gonna go ahead and take this clip off, this one right here. And again, I'm trying to keep my hands out of the way here because I know you wanna see. Now, you hear that? Not too bad though, I will say, not too bad. I've had worse. All right, now I've gone through the seam, so now I'm gonna try and make sure everything is flat again. Because I don't want puckers if I can help it. There we go. Everything feels good. All right. And you're just simply gonna keep on going around a quarter inch 
all the way. That's all this is, quarter inch. We're just sewing a quarter inch. Now I'm trying to keep these two together. Somehow I got a little lopsided. So I'm going to hold it down. And when I get to that stitch line where I made that X, I'm going to go ahead and turn it. I have a little bit of a pucker. So I'm going to attempt to make it flat just like so. Perfect. All right. Get to that line. I'm going to turn it again. Great. It worked out nicely. And you're just going to sew a quarter inch all the way around to the stop point. Remember I used a red pin. I'm going to stop past this X here. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this off camera because this is basically what we're doing over and over until you get around. Leave that two, three inch gap. And then we'll turn it and we'll discuss what to do after we turn it. Okay, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of this off camera, but I will see you guys in just a sec. Okay. So this is what you should have <laughs> all sewn together, except that one hole, right? Well, at this point, I'm going to take you underneath here. I'm going to snip off all of the corners to get rid of some of the bulk. Now I'm going to make it a little skinny around the edges just to help with it. Whoop. We want to make sure not to do what I'm going to sew. Just get it all cut. Now I will tell you, it was hard for me. I didn't see real well and you can see that I didn't get on the X. Possibly. Let me go ahead and give this a, the line sewn is right here. I know it's hard to see, so that's why I'm telling you it's better if you get that turn on the X, that way your point will look nice. But at any rate, we are cutting her down a little bit. I'm going to do this to all four of my corners. Okay. Just give it a little cleanup, just a little bit. Okay. Now <clears throat> the next part is to take it and go ahead and turn it inside out. Now you can do it with your hands. If you sew to dyer, I do have my trusty, uh, I don't know what they're called. All of a sudden I'm losing it. Um, hemostats. Goodness, I'm a nurse and you'd think I'd remember. I'm going to grab a little piece of it on the opposite side and I'm just going to pull it through. And it, this is why it's important that you back stitch before and after that hole because you're going to want to pull it inside out, okay? Or outside in. No. Yeah, we're going to put the outside on the inside and make the inside inside. <laughs> Once you're done with that, now y'all know I've lost electricity in this room. I've got extension cords for lights and for my computer. So my ironing board is in my dining room. So I am actually going to press it. Just so y'all know, I am going to go ahead and press this, but I'm going to show you exactly what I do here as soon as I get it all turned out. <clears throat> And we're close. <laughs> Let me go ahead and pull this off. There we go. Okay. Hands don't want to work well today either. Okay. Now I'm going to do the last part off camera and I'm also going to do the white version of this off camera. So the next time we meet, I'll have them all finished, both of them. And I will have tested the other batting. And I'm hoping that it works because it's cheaper. All right. I'm going to use a turning tool. And at this point, you're going to have it. It doesn't look like much. I know you're going to have to shape it, but I am going to go in here 
and I'll do this off camera too, but I'm going to go in and I'm going to push out my corners as best as I can. I just want to at least get one while I'm here with you. It helps if you have, it doesn't matter what your turning tool is, just something that you don't poke through your um, fabric. All right, so once you get all of your uh, corners turned and pushed, I gotta, I gotta figure this one out. I don't have it all out yet. <clears throat> and like I said, I'll do this part off camera as far as like getting the corners all the way, but I wanna show you you're just gonna shape it a little bit, okay? Make sure you get your corners all pushed out before you do the next step. So at this point, and you can tell my corners aren't all pushed and that's fine. We do have this hole, okay? So what you're going, I'm gonna take it to my pressing board and I'm going to make sure that I press down so it stays a little bit. And then I'm just gonna simply stitch an eighth of an inch all the way around this um, bowl cozy. Now I will tell you, you're going through again a lot of fabric. So if you need to help your machine, don't think you've done something wrong, it's fine. But just you're just gonna go around an eighth of an inch, kind of like a decorative stitch. Um, it's, but it's to close up, to make it all equal and to close up this hole, okay? And this is why you don't want to end on a point. You want to do it before and after. You know, you don't want to end on, on, an, on a seam. You don't want to keep the hole open here. You want something along this edge. Makes it easy to press it, and it also makes it easy to um, sew. So again, eighth of an inch all the way around, and then you'll shape it when you're done, and you will have the cutest little bowl cozy. So I'll see you guys in just a sec. So those are bowl cozies and I got mine finished all ready. Well, to go <laughs> along with the um, multicolored. I did an orange polka dot inside, super cute. I know my daughter's gonna love, love, love this. Um, I will tell you that thinner batting is so much easier to ma manipulate and it worked. I put it in with water, uh, about three minutes it was boiling and I <clears throat> stuck the whole thing in there. And when I pulled it out, my hands did not hurt at all. I totally understand why my daughter loves it now. Um, cause that bowl was, I tried to pull it out. It was piping hot, you know, too hot to touch kind of thing. Now this was warm naturally, but it, it didn't hurt at all. So that thinner batting of requests by Quilter's Dream works fantastic. And <clears throat> because it is thinner, like I said, um, it's much easier to manipulate. So your points come out better. Uh, it just, I think it looks nice. Super cute, right? And uh, this, the batting is thicker. I can feel that it's thicker. And it's a little hard, harder to manipulate when it is thicker. So just, just a little food for thought. This was my test run and it was, it's not a hundred percent batting in here. So I'm just going to use it as a bowl uh, for decoration. I might put my wonder clips in here. Um, I do that with one of the first ones I made. This was <laughs> one of the first ones and I got to looking at it. It wasn't horrible. It's just, I could tell the difference. Um, between one of the very first ones. I made this several years ago and I just put stuff in it. Um, just in my dining room, I have just stuff. <laughs> so, um, and you can tell that this batting was thinner. I think it's a, to be honest with you, I think what's in here is a hundred percent cotton, but I'm not sure. I didn't analyze it enough and it can be 80, 20. So that's why I'm not using this for the microwave, but you can tell the difference between the thicknesses of the batting. And, um, this was a lot easier to manipulate. Turned out fantastic. Was very encouraging. This was my dry run to make sure that I knew what I was doing because <laughs> I hadn't made one in years. So 
Those are bowl cozies. Now, one of the things, how, how can you make this different or make it your own? Well, of course, the fabric selection um, can um, really uh, make it individualized. Maybe they like a favorite NFL team or uh, maybe they have a favorite college. Maybe they have a favorite color. Uh, you can really, um, by fabric choice, make it your own. But another thought too, so I sewed an X, okay, and that's the quilting to hold the batting to the fabric, right? So that it doesn't shift. <clears throat> you don't have to sew an X. If you wanna quilt it, that one piece of fabric to each batting, you can free motion quilt it, you can stitch in the ditch maybe if you had, instead of a piece of fabric of a 10 inch square, maybe you had a star and uh, you wanted to stitch in the ditch along the star um, or any, I mean, you could do four patches, okay? Uh, or nine patches or 25 patches or whatever you want inside it that, you don't even have to use a 10 inch square. I just found it to make the perfect size. If you go smaller uh, than a 10 inch square, I would use, instead of two and a quarter over and one and a quarter up, I would use two over and one up. So the math changes a little bit and it's all about experiment, what, what, is, what it is that you'll find works for you. Uh, most people still use two and one um, on the dimensions of your darts with a 10 inch. It was just a lot harder for me to manipulate. And that's why, like with this one, I actually changed the to two and a quarter because I just found it easier. <clears throat> Um, to, to manipulate when it's a little bigger. So that, is, and then if you go larger, um, I've seen somebody do a 12 inch square with two and a quarter and one and a quarter. So I don't know after that, <laughs> it would totally be trial and error, but you don't have to do a 10 inch square. I just found that that was the perfect size for me. And of course it could be a layer cake. So, um, you could totally use some scraps. Maybe you had some extras of some 10 inch squares from your layer cakes or your 10 karat crystals, you know, whatever that company may be that you have uh, leftovers or stash of of those, but you can totally, totally do that. So quilting it, that can make it your own. Um, the X is just easy. That's simply it. It's just fast and easy. That's the only reason why uh, most people use it. Um, another, um, thing, instead of points, you can, before you, um, sew it together the first time with a quarter inch seam, you know, you get your two pieces quilted and you put them, you're putting them together after your darts and you're putting them together. So that quarter inch seam, uh, before you do that, you can actually use a cup or something, something small that is going to give you a rounded edge. So instead of these cute little points, they'll be rounded. So there's a lot of things that you can do to make these your own. Now I wanted to tell you, for those of you who've never made these, um, one of the things that scared the Watusi out of my daughter, she washed it. And when it, when it came out of the dryer, it was like, kind of like a puff ball, especially I would imagine with this thicker batting. <laughs> we'll see what the thinner does for her, but she was afraid to tell me. And she realized very quickly that all she had to do is reform it and it was fine. But <laughs> it does, I just wanna give you a heads up. The first time somebody washes them, they may um, be a little concerned <laughs> because it comes out kind of poofy and not necessarily in shape. And you have to reshape it just a little bit before you Put your bowl in there so those are bowl cozies guys and i hope you enjoyed this um short tutorial i hope it was something inspirational for you and next week i'm hoping we will do i think i'm thinking it, it's where we have a guest so i look i hope that's next week so it, um look forward to that but whatever it is, we'll be here again on Wednesday. So um, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, or whatever, you can drop them down below in the uh, comment section, or you can come out today at Facebook uh, at 3 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. I'm my time, that's here in the United States, Virginia. 
but uh, we do a live quilting and answer session every Wednesday after a video drops. We are out on live on Facebook, so hope to see you there uh, at 3 p.m. If you have any questions, uh, be more than happy to answer them. If there's anything I felt I left out during the edit, um, I will share it at that point, but uh, that'll be at 3 p.m. If there's anything that you may be interested in that you saw, I also have our shop link down in the description box. You can come out and check that out. We'd love to have your support and we appreciate your support. But until next time, guys, yeah, till next time, may you all continue to be inspired, productive, and joyful. Never stop believing and never stop making your dreams in quilting come true. I love y'all. Thanks for stopping by. Happy quilting and see y'all soon.